Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at 10 things to look at when buying a used pre-built PC from places like eBay, Facebook, and, and other places. So first off, you're going to see some very common pre-built systems that are being sold. This one is a Dell Inspiron 5675. Now, 299 is not a bad price for a PC. As you can see here, it looks quite nice, looks quite modern. Type-C port on the front there and some other ports on there as well which is quite useful, a nice LED looking light there. So it is quite modern, but the problem is people that list these things don't tell you exactly what it is. They don't tell you the name that it's a Dell Inspiron 5675. They tell you it's just an AMD Ryzen 5 to lead you to think that you are getting a modern Ryzen 5 processor in here, but you're not. You're going to be getting a older first generation Ryzen processor, which is a Ryzen 5, but it's a first generation which means it doesn't support Windows 11. That's one major point there. Another one is the fact that most people that buy this sort of stuff will think they can upgrade the CPU because it has an AM4 socket, and you'll be mistaken because the BIOS is locked. That is another key factor. So when they come pre-installed with Windows 11 here, they're trying to make you feel that it is a new modern PC where really you are buying an older system. We have, in fact, a Ryzen 5 1400, which is not supported with Windows 11. So that means you're running Windows 11 on uh, unsupported hardware, which means if Microsoft closed the door, you will suddenly not be able to update your version of Windows and you'll have to then put Windows 10 back on. Windows 10 ends support in October 2025. It's important to know that the system board components, so you should always check to see what sort of components are actually on the board and what you can upgrade and what you can't upgrade. And unfortunately, if you do a bit of research, you'll probably find out that you're not going to be able to do too much with this system. The Inspiron 5675 CPU upgrade means you're forced to only be able to install the Ryzen 7 1700X or the 1800X which isn't worth spending the money on that particular type of upgrade. Now, if you could drop in a Ryzen 7 5800X3D, or you could drop in a 5600X or something like that in there, it would have been ideal. Unfortunately, uh, Dell love to lock their BIOSes down, which means it will not accept processor upgrades of that type of generation, even though standard motherboards like Asus, Gigabyte, uh, ASRock will accept upgrades on AM4 socket. Unfortunately, Dell don't allow you to do that, and neither do HP and Lenovo and a lot of other pre-built uh, manufacturers. So when you see articles like this thinking you're going to be able to purchase this pretty cheaply and then drop in another CPU, you'll be mistaken. Another thing to look out for is the actual motherboard. You can see it does tell you it's an AM4 socket, which could lead you to think you could drop in a CPU. You might be lucky and get away on some of these where you can drop another CPU in there to get it to work, but most of them have BIOS lockdowns, and that's a key point. Another thing to look at is the power that is delivered to the CPU. They're all proprietary. The power switch is also proprietary, and there's some models that have... Uh, proprietary fan headers on them uh, and also the lack of fan headers and you may even have uh, something like this where you have the front umbilical section which has to be plugged into the motherboard and as soon as you try to remove it and do a case swap on these sorts of things you end up with loads of error code so you have to leave these all plugged in otherwise you end up with problems this can be a very common problem for a lot of people the actual headers on the board, like the 24 pin, they may not have a 24 pin. You may need to swap the power supply. Again, this is proprietary, as you can see here. So you may end up with a lot of other issues. This is only a 290 watt power supply, which isn't going to deliver much power to some hungry graphics cards that you might want to drop into that system. So you started off with 300 pounds and now you're replacing the power supply by a bunch of different cables and having to work through some sort of janky setup where you're having to use some cables like these to get past the issues that Dell have put in place. And these, some of these are really super dangerous. They're really dodgy because there's going to be a lot of power going through some of these. I've seen people using, you know, the SATA 2 PCI Express 
adapters to get around some issues with the power for the graphics card and this can cause major problems these get super hot there's a lot of watts going through here and that can cause a fire so be very very careful even the power supply people are using the original power supplies and pushing them way beyond beyond their capabilities and this can also cause a fire the Dell Optiplex 3050 is another popular Dell system. But as you can see there, proprietary power supply again. They do love their proprietary stuff on all of Dell systems. And yes, you can work around these. But soon as you start looking at the power supply and looking at the power ratings on it, this one particular is 240 watts, which isn't that great. It's pretty low and it's a proprietary connection and it's a proprietary shape. So you're going to have to do some modifications to the case. Case swapping again can be very difficult. The smaller form factors have even less power. These are only 180 watts. So bear that in mind when you start buying all of these systems. The HP Elite Desks are pretty popular too. This has 180 watt power supply in this unit, which isn't a lot of power. And I've seen people recommending putting in the RTX A2000 into these little devices. That requires 70 watts of power. And again, that doesn't leave you a lot for the rest of the other components. And if you start pushing it beyond its capabilities, it can catch fire. And it can cause problems. So be very, very careful when purchasing these. These are also got lock biases. People buy them thinking they can upgrade the CPU. And again, you can see questions on Reddit and other places. People ask questions like this all the time because they jump the gun and buy these thinking that they can upgrade the CPU. They think they're smarter than everyone else. I've seen a gap in the market. They buy them. And next thing you know, they end up with their fingers burnt and then they can't do anything with it. So you can see here, you can buy cards like these, but these are pretty expensive cards. They're very good cards for gaming. You can drop it in one of these and it should do perfectly fine, but you will probably need to look at upgrading that power supply because at 180 watts, this requires 70 watts of power. So there you go. There's quite a bit. If you go to the manufacturer's website, it will tell you max power consumption, 70 watts right there you should not be using that power supply to its maximum capacity or even going over its uh, maximum capacity because it's putting a lot of heat through that power supply and it can catch fire so i'm not saying that all of these systems are rubbish and they're useless i'm saying they are fit for purpose use it for the purpose that it was designed for and start trying to make these into hardcore gaming systems because they're just not these are workstations. These ones here are workstations. They are uh, built for workplaces. And you can see here, this one, uh, pretty popular on YouTube. Again, you pick these up pretty cheap. But there's a reason why, because they're very limited in what you can do with them. And if you go and have a look at the motherboard, again, on the motherboard, you're going to have proprietary connections right here uh, for the power. There's also a, a power supply connections are not 24 pin lack of fan headers, also proprietary parts on the board as well. Now, if you're going to use this as just a general use computer, it's going to be perfectly fine. And if you want to stick Linux on it, it's going to be perfectly fine as well. It's when you're trying to make it something that it's not. And, uh, you know, this is when you're going to run into issues. Another thing people forget to do is price out exactly how much everything's going to cost what you're replacing for instance you're buying the actual unit itself most of these come with very little ram in them and you're going to have to upgrade the ram you're going to have to replace the ssd if there is no ssd in it you're going to have to buy one and then you're going to have to you know maybe change the power supply then drop in a graphics card and then buy the unit itself you add all this up and it becomes quite expensive just as much as it would to probably build a small cheap budget system now, one of the big problems I see with these particular types of systems is people buy them for gaming. And of course, what happens is they'll drop a big graphics card in there, put a power supply in there. And of course, they end up running into other issues, which is, you know, micro stutters, uh, latency and other issues uh, with the system. And that's because the system is starting to bottleneck and it was never really designed to be a gaming system of that caliber. So that is the reason why. And then you end up tweaking the system to try and alleviate these problems and it becomes a bit of a nightmare. So just bear that in mind. These were really never designed to be gaming uh, computers. 
try and keep that bottleneck uh, as low as possible so it's not causing major problems and you should have good 1080p gaming on any of these systems. Now don't overpay for these particular devices. Try and find one that hasn't been refurbished already by someone and they've inflated the price. What you want to try and do is get it as cheap as possible and then try and drop in some components yourself and get that up to snuff and then you should be pretty much and you should be pretty much good to go. Another thing to take care of is make sure that CPU does support Windows 11 and you want to try and get say 11th gen or second gen Ryzen if you can. This will bump the price up a little bit but it will give that PC a lot more longevity in the long run rather than buying something that is going to be obsolete pretty much uh, next year. So bear that in mind as well. It's something to uh, look into. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. Let me know in the comments section below whether you've bought any of these and whether you're using any of these right now. Be interested to see which ones you're using. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.